Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. When Jesus addressed the church at Laodicea, he said, I feel like vomiting you out of my mouth. This is the strongest condemnation he gave to any of the seven churches. Paraphrasing these words, what Jesus really said was, you make me sick. Now what prompted him to say this to a church? Well, Laodicea stood on the bank of a river and was situated at a junction of three great roads which were important trade routes covering Asia Minor. One historian said it only needed peace to make Laodicea a great commercial, manufacturing and financial centre. Well, that peace came with the Romans, and Laodicea became a boomtown. It was a banking centre and one of the wealthiest cities in the world. But one of the dangers of having wealth is that people are tempted to put their trust in it. And this is what happened to the church at Laodicea. Jesus said to them, You say you are rich, increase with wealth, and have need of nothing. Yet you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Never allow your resources to make you believe that you don't need Jesus. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. We're glad you've joined us today for Set Free with author and pastor Ken Legg. Phil is my name. In a very interesting week this week, looking at when Jesus comes to church, the seven letters to the seven churches in Revelation is what we're looking at. And today, a slight change of pace, a look at the church of Laodicea. It sounds like Jesus wasn't very impressed with them at all. I think I'm correct in saying that it was the only church of the seven that received no word of praise. And he said the issue that he had with them was that they were lukewarm. That was the case, wasn't it? That's right. I think often this term is misinterpreted. Usually you hear preachers say that they were apathetic. You know, they were just lukewarm. They needed to get on fire for God. Therefore, he was going to go spew them out of his mouth because they were lacking in zeal. But I think there's some problems with that interpretation, Phil. First of all, this would mean that God accepts us or rejects us on the level of our zeal. But, of course, we all blow hot and cold. Mm. You know, that's a fact of life. Um, And the second thing, of course, is that zeal is relative. When we say you need to have more zeal, like what level is acceptable? See, I might look at others and say "You you you need to be more zealous, more on fire for God. From my perspective, they might be cold. But then I look at, have you ever heard of Dave, David Brainard? No. A great, great saint that lived in the 18th century. And he just, uh, he was the epitome of someone that was just poured out for Jesus Christ. You know, he died at the age of 30. He just wrecked his body because he was so sold out for Jesus. And I haven't even got out of the starting blocks in, in comparison, comparison to yeah. him. So, so zeal is relative. And often when people say, you know, if you're not uh, zealous for God, then he'll spew you out of his mouth. They're using their level of zeal as the benchmark, which is really self righteousness. Mm. You've got to be like me. You've got to be as hot as I am. Now, I heard a, I heard a, a sermon once because I was interested in the thing. What does it mean to be a lukewarm Christian? What do other preachers say about this? And I, I've got to admit, I, I went on, on online and I looked at some sermons online, and there was a preacher that, uh, who preached a sermon called "How to Be a Red Hot Christian." Okay, this would be interesting. Said, yeah, he said, "Here are the ten things you need to do to be a red hot Christian. First of all, stop wasting time. <laughs> Secondly, pray without ceasing. Thirdly, make sure you read the Bible every single day." He said, "Know it, stow it, show it, and sow it." Okay, <laughs> I won't all, go to all that now. <laughs> this all sounds fairly legitimate. Yeah, yeah. keep going. Number four, quit hanging out with lukewarm warm Christians. Well, I'll, I'll probably lose most of my friends if I do that. <laughs> Number five, release the tithe of your increase to God. Number six, attend church regularly. Number seven, get rid of all sin and unnecessary weights. Number eight, keep your eyes on Jesus. Number nine, trust Jesus for guidance. And number 10, witness to everyone you possibly can. Okay, that, that all sounds good. Well, okay, so what he says, if you do those 10 things, you're a red-hot Christian. If you only do one, you're hardly in the kingdom, okay? So Christians who don't register high on this scale believe that they're going to be vomited, if you like, out of Christ's mouth. That is to lose their salvation on the basis of how many of the 10 you're doing. Mm. Now, here's the problem with it, Phil. He says, Jesus said, I would rather that you were hot or cold. One or the other. One or the other. So... Five out of ten is not acceptable. I'd rather you had none out of ten than the five out of ten. Okay. And uh, when you think about that, that's where the argument falls down. If if to be um, hot is to do all the ten, Jesus said, well, I'd rather you were 
cold yeah. than lukewarm. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. I mean, if Jesus had just said, I wish you were hot, then that would have some legs. But yeah. he, was ref- he, he wasn't necessarily referring to our zeal but because he, he said, I wish you were hot or cold. Yeah. He actually said cold first, didn't he? He said he cold, did. cold or hot. That's right. right. So what do we read into that? What did he mean? Well, the problem with this church actually was not apathy. They weren't slack. Uh, they were busy, in fact. But it was their works that made Jesus want to vomit. Their works were neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm. So what does that mean? The problem with this church is not that they were doing deeds, but how they were doing them. Now, let me give you my definition here of hot. Hot is when you're on fire for God with God's fire. Okay. Okay, that's the difference. Yep. Now, we talk, we've been talking about grace recently on this program, and uh, you know, Paul says when the grace of God comes to us, we're, we become a people who are zealous for good works. So that kind of zeal is spirit-led and it's spirit-empowered, or it's grace-based, if you like. Yeah. You know, Paul says, I labored more abundantly for the Lord than the rest of them, but it was not me, it was the grace of God. So he gave credit where it belonged to. Now, if that's a definition of being hot, that you're spirit-led, spirit-empowered. Cold is refusing to do anything until that fire burns, yeah. until God leads us and empowers us to do it. Uh, so to do something when we're not empowered is a little bit like Abraham and Sarah. You know, They knew that they were meant to have a son that was going to be the seed, the promised seed through which the Messiah would come. Nothing happened. God didn't do it, so they took matters into their own hands yeah. And they said, we can still do it in our strength. And so really the lukewarmness that he's referring to is a mixture of these two things, the the hot and the cold, trying to do it in your own strength and trying to rely on God at the same time. You can't do it. Yeah, it was taking from the cold the part that, hey, the fire of God is not burning in me, I'm cold. But then it's taking from the hot, but I'm going to be zealous with good works anyway. I'm, yeah. going, to, I'm going to do this in my strength. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jesus said that uh, many will say, Lord, we've done these wonderful works. You know, we've prophesied, we've cast out demons, done all these mighty works. But Jesus will say, but I never knew you. I had nothing to do with that. It was all your own making and your yeah. own works, you know. And, and so Jesus said to them, you say, I'm rich, I've become wealthy, and I've got need of nothing. In mm-hmm. other words, Jesus, we don't even need you now. Uh, in fact, you know, this this earthquake that we spoke about at Philadelphia, it also struck uh, Laodicea. And Rome came and offered those cities help. And, and of course, Smyrna received the help. Uh, uh, sorry, Philadelphia received the help. But Laodicea said, no, thanks. We're okay. This self-sufficient yeah. attitude, you know, we yeah. can do it all on our own. And uh, true to character with Jesus, he didn't just say, here's the issue. Yeah. But he also reached out to them with love. Yeah, that's right. And he says, I stand at the door and knock. Uh, Not so much uh, of the church, because he said if any man, it's like the church was doing it all without him, Mm. doing it all in their own strength. But here comes Jesus knocking at the door of the individual's heart. And he says, if any man hears my voice, I will come into him and I will sup with him. So there's this famous painting by a man called Holman Hunt, uh, Jesus, the light of the world, which represents this scene. He's standing at this door and knocking. And somebody pointed out to him, but there's no handle on the door. And he said, oh, there is. He said, but the handle's on the inside. Mm. You know, it can only be opened from the inside. Jesus is a gentleman. He would not force his way in. Um, but, you know, he's, he's offering the coming. He's knocking at the door. And so this letter starts with the focus being on works, but it ends with relationship. Jesus said, I want to come in. I want to sup with you. Now, that word sup is a reference to the evening meal, the main meal of the day, if you like. And it was never eaten hurriedly. It's not like taking a snap, snack and going on your way, but it was eaten leisurely. You know, people would have fellowship together around that meal. Jesus said, I want to come in and, and sup with you. I want, I want to share things that are on my heart and you will sup with me. You'll, you'll tell me things that are on your heart and we'll have fellowship together. So what a beautiful way to end this letter that even though the church has gone their own way, doing it all in their own strength, Jesus comes to the individual and says, I want relationship. Well, that brings us to the end of our series this week. Hope you can join us next week when we start a brand new one. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book Grace Roots, 
which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.